Hello students, welcome to our physics class. In the previous two classes, we have studied about Hans Oersted experiment. How does a magnetic field produces around a strong current carrying wire, Ampere's swimming route, and some very important characteristics of magnetic field lines. And uh, how do you find out uh, the direction of magnetic field around a strong current carrying wire uh, by using right hand thumb rule and force acting on a charged particle moving in the presence of magnetic field that is f is equal to 2 ab sine theta and after that the nature of trajectory of uh, charged particle if it enters uniform magnetic field that means if a charged particle enters a uniform magnetic field moving parallel or anti-parallel to the direction of magnetic field it doesn't experience any force uh, in both the cases the nature of trajectory of charge particle is a straight line if the charge particle enters a perpendicular uniform magnetic field charge particle describes circular path if the charge particle enters a uniform magnetic field in any direction charge particle describes spiral or helical path okay well uh, in this class we are going to discuss about the next very important concept that is cyclotron okay well let's start today's class <clears throat> cyclotron is a particle accelerator cyclotron is a particle accelerator it is a device used to accelerate a positively charged particles like proton that means 1h1 deuteron 1h2 and alpha particles that is uh, 2h4 to a very high energy cyclotron is a particle accelerator it is a device used to accelerate positively charged particles like proton deuteron alpha particle to a very high energy so evo lawrence and ms livingston invented the cyclotron what is the meaning of cyclotron? It is a device used to accelerate the positively charged particles like proton, deuteron, alpha particle to very high energy. Simply, it is a particle accelerator. Evo Lawrence and MS Livingston invented cyclotron. So, cyclotron uses the concept of Crossed electric and magnetic field. That means electric field and the magnetic field, which are mutually perpendicular to each other. Suppose if a charged particle Q enters the electric field, what happens? The charged particle will experience a force. Is it not? What is that? F vector is equal to Q E vector. The charged particle will get accelerated. According to Newton's second law of motion, F vector is equal to M into A vector. Now comparing these two equations, so M A vector that is exactly equal to Q E vector. So A vector is equal to Q E vector divided by M. This is the acceleration of charged particle if it enters the electric field. So, what is the function of electric field in cyclotron? That is very important. So, electric field actually accelerates the charged particle. That is the function of electric field in cyclotron. Is that electric field accelerates? accelerates the charged particle 
so this is the mathematical expression for acceleration of the charged particle and if it enters a perpendicular magnetic field so what happens if a charged particle enters the perpendicular uniform magnetic field charge particle describes the circular path that is the nature of trajectory of charged particle if it enters the perpendicular magnetic field is it not so the function of the perpendicular magnetic field e uh, throws the charge particle into circular path so uh, here the frequency of the charged particle so does not depends on frequency of charge particle does not depends on the speed of the charge particle and the radius of the circle Bit. So actually, so this is the principle of cyclotron. Cyclotron uses the concept of electric field and magnetic field, which are mutually perpendicular to each other. So electric field accelerates the charged particle. Perpendicular magnetic field throws the charged particle into circular path and bringing the charged particle again back into the electric field. So the frequency of the charged particle. Does not depends on the speed of the charge particle and the radius of circular orbit. So this is the principle of cyclotron. What is the meaning of cyclotron? Cyclotron is a particle accelerator. It is a device used to accelerate positively charged particles like proton. Later on, also particle to very high energy. Eva Lawrence and M. S. Livingston invented cyclotron. <clears throat> so this is the schematic diagram of cyclotron. This is cross-sectional view of cyclotron. Okay. Uh, let us discuss about the construction of cyclotron. Cyclotron is a particle accelerator. It is a device used to accelerate the positively charged particles like proton, deuteron, also particles to vary high energies. So the principle is uh, it uses the concept of uh, the perpendicular uh, electric and magnetic field. That means electric field and magnetic field, which are mutually perpendicular to each other. So electric field accelerates the charge particle. Perpendicular magnetic field throws the charge particle into circular path. The frequency of the charge particle does not depend on the speed of the charge particle and the radius of circular orbit. So now let us discuss about the construction. Construction is very important. Uh, the first step is uh, it consisting of uh, two small hollow metallic of cylinders. Are called heaps. It consisting of two small hollow metallic of cylinders. So these are here two D1, D2 are called deeps. So cyclotron consisting of two small small hollow hollow metallic. Metallic of cylinders. Metallic of cylinders are called are called deeps. Are called deeps. Why? Because of their shape. Okay. D1 and D2 are there in the form of a letter D. Hence D1 and D2. Are called deeps. So cyclotron consisting of two small hollow metallic of cylinders D1 and D2 are called deeps because of their shape. So these are mounted inside a vacuum chamber between the Poles of a very strong, a powerful 
electromagnets which generates the magnetic field lines from north pole to south pole look at this animation actually the d these are two d's these are mounted inside vacuum chamber these are mounted inside vacuum chamber between the poles poles of a strong powerful electromagnet this is the north pole of electromagnet this is the south pole of electromagnet which generates the magnetic field lines from way to way from north pole to south pole from bottom to top so that the magnetic field lines are perpendicular to the plane of the two beams so look at this cross sectional view of the two beams actually your dot marks show the perpendicular uniform magnetic field so what is the direction of magnetic field line <clears throat> that is directed normally outwards the direction of magnetic field line that is normally outwards so the magnetic field lines are perpendicular to the plane of the beam okay so this is the second step in construction the first one <clears throat> is consisting of two a uh, small hollow metallic of cylinder d1 and d2 are called beams because of their shape and these are mounted inside a vacuum chamber between the poles of very strong powerful electromagnet which generates the magnetic field line from north pole to south pole from bottom to top so that the magnetic field line is perpendicular to the plane of the beams so after that the beams are connected to a source of high frequency alternating voltage the beams are connected to the source of high frequency alternating voltage which changes okay which changes the polarity of beams for every off cycle it means for every of rotation of the charged particle uh, in the presence of perpendicular uniform magnetic field the polarity of these means uh, uh, positive and negative polarity means plus and minus okay that will change <clears throat> so for every of cycle the polarity of uh, these reversible actually uh, the frequency of the rotation of a charged particle that should be equal to the frequency of applied ac voltage that is actually called the resonance condition of cyclotron frequency of rotation of the uh, charged particle that should be equal to uh, frequency of rf oscillator okay that is the third step in the construction so a charged particle like proton is accelerated the charged particle for example what is this a proton so this is to be accelerated is injected injected into the beam near the center near the center in a plane that is perpendicular plane that is perpendicular to uniform magnetic field a positively charged particle is that like proton that means 1h1 is injected injected into the beam 
near the center near the center in a plane in a plane that is perpendicular to uniform magnetic field the charged particle is pulled out of the base by a deflecting plate through a window a charged particle that is pulled out of the base by a deflecting plate this is a deflecting plate through a window this is a window so finally <clears throat> the whole device is in high vacuum the whole device is kept in highly evacuated chamber so that the air molecules may not collide with may not collide with this charged particle it means proton so these are the six very important steps in construction so it is very simple the first one a uh, cyclotron consisting of uh, two small hollow metallic half cylinders d1 and d2 are called d why because of their shape they are mounted inside a vacuum chamber between the poles of strong powerful electromagnets which generates a magnetic free line from north pole to south pole from bottom to top so that the magnetic free lines are perpendicular to the plane of the two dies right so the dies are connected to the source of high frequency alternating voltage which changes the polarity of dies for every half cycle okay the positively charged particle like proton p is a proton is injected that is to be accelerated is injected into the dies near the center in a plane plane perpendicular to uniform magnetic field so finally uh a charged particle that is pulled out of the dies uh, by a deflecting plate through a window the whole device is in high vacuum the pressure is about 10 power minus 6 uh, mm of mercury 10 power minus 6 mm of mercury that is the pressure so that the air molecules may not collide with the charged particle the whole device is in high vacuum so that the air molecules may not collide with the charged particle so this is about the six very important steps in construction construction is very important so after that uh, let us discuss about uh, the working so this is very interesting and uh, it is very important so what is the working working of cyclotron okay a positively charged particle what is that proton for example proton that is to be accelerated that means it should increase the speed it should increase the velocity it should increase the energy right so a positively charged particle like proton that is to be injected exactly at the center of the dies a positively charged particle like proton that is to be accelerated so that is injected into the dies near their center in a plane that is perpendicular to the uniform magnetic field okay so this is proton proton is injected into the dies near the center in a plane perpendicular to uniform magnetic field okay at certain instant of time at certain instant of time uh d1 is positively charged d2 is negatively charged okay at certain instant of time d1 is positively charged uh, d2 is negatively charged okay now what happens so this is proton proton is a positively charged particle so 
now what is the charge on d2 that is negatively charged so the proton uh, is attracted towards the negatively charged d d2 and that is because of electrostatic force of attraction between uh, positively charged particle proton and the negatively charged d d2 okay so actually here electric field accelerates this charged particle with some velocity let us consider that is v so once the charged particle enters d d2 inside the d d2 what is the electric field inside the hollow charged metallic of cylinder inside the hollow metallic of cylinder charged hollow metallic of cylinder what is the electric field electric field is zero but the magnetic field that is not equal to zero so once the charged particle enters the d d2 inside the d d2 there is no electric field so the charged particle is acted upon by only only the perpendicular magnetic field so the perpendicular magnetic field actually throws the charged particle into semi circular path and bringing the charged particle again back into the electric field actually the perpendicular magnetic field does not change the speed of the charged particle it will change only the direction perpendicular magnetic field changes only the direction of charged particle it does not change the speed of the charged particle so the perpendicular magnetic field throws the charged particle into semi circular path and bring the charged particle back into the electric field okay so again here the charged particle enters a gap if it enters a gap what happens that is very very important so once the charged particle completes the semi circular path okay then the polarity of d that is the reversal now the d d1 gets negatively charged d d2 gets positively charged so if the charged particle enters a gap so it is acted upon by electric field so electric field accelerates the charged particle that means uh, electric field increases the velocity okay let us consider that is 2v okay so once the charged particle enters the gap so charged particle is acted upon by electric field so electric field accelerates the charged particle okay so here again proton is attracted towards proton is a positively charged particle right so that is attracted towards the negatively charged d d1 and again uh, the charged particle enters enters d d1 inside the d d1 there is no electric field right inside the d d1 there is no electric field so it is acted upon by only the perpendicular magnetic field this point is very important once the charged particle enters the enters the d d1 inside the d d1 there is no electric field okay it is acted upon by only the perpendicular magnetic so the perpendicular magnetic field throws the charged particle into again semi circular path but of greater radius 
Why? That is because of increased speed across the gap. Okay. And again, the perpendicular magnetic field bringing the charged particle back into the electric field. So, once the charged particle completes the semicircular path, okay, so polarity, what happens? Reversals. Now, V1 uh, gets positively charged, D2 gets negatively charged. Okay. If a charged particle enters this gap, actually perpendicular magnetic field does not change the speed of the charged particle. So it will change only the direction. Right? So once the charged particle enters the gap, so electric field again accelerates the charged particle. So across this gap, its speed becomes 3. Up to here, the speed is 2V. Once if it enters a gap, the charged particle is acted upon by electric field. Electric field accelerates. That means increases the speed of the charged particle. So, again here, the proton is attracted towards the negatively charged D, D2. That is electrostatic force of attraction, right? Between the positively charged uh, proton, negatively charged D, D2. So again, a uh, proton enters, enters D, D2. Inside, there is no electric field. It is acted upon by only the perpendicular magnetic field. It does not change the speed. It will change only the direction. It will bring the charged particle back into the electric field. So this process repeats. This process repeats. Finally, the charged particle reaches the periphery of the D. Periphery means almost the edge of the D. And finally, the charged particle that is pulled out of the D by a deflecting plate through a window. So finally, what happens? Finally, charged particle will pull it out of the D by a deflecting plate through a window. So this high energy charged particle hits the target like a nucleus of atom. So this is about working of cyclotron. Working is very important. So what is the working of cyclotron? <clears throat> so a positively charged particle uh, like proton that is injected into the D near their center in a plane that is perpendicular to the uniform magnetic field. So at certain instant of time, so uh, 1D, what is this? D1 is negatively charged, D2 is positively charged. Okay, look at this animation. The charged particle enters a gap immediately the polarity of D that is reversal, right? So proton is actually uh, attracted towards the negatively charged D, D1 and enters D, D1. Inside the D, D1 there is no electric field. It is acted upon by only the perpendicular magnetic field. The perpendicular magnetic field throws the charged particle into semi circular path it does not change the speed 
it will change the only the direction and bringing the charged particle back into the electric field once the charged particle enters a gap immediately the once the charged particle enters a gap immediately the polarity of d is reversed so d2 becomes negatively charged d1 becomes positively charged again proton is attracted towards negatively charged d d2 and proton enters d d2 inside d d2 there is no electric field it is acted upon by perpendicular magnetic field uh, perpendicular magnetic field actually throws the charged particle into semi circular path but of greater radius that is because of increase in speed where across the gap right so this process actually repeats the finally the uh, charged particle reaches the periphery of the this uh, with maximum speed okay and uh, this high uh, energy charged particle that is hits the target uh, like nucleus of an atom the charged particle that is pulled out of the dis by a deflecting field through a small window so finally the high energy charged particle hits the target like nucleus of an atom so this is about the working of uh, cyclotron so now uh, we will discuss about the theory that is very important theory of cyclotron let us discuss about the theory of cyclotron actually here the charged particle is moving in circular path whatever the particle if it is moving in circular path it requires what the centripetal force it requires centripetal force here that is provided by the lorentz magnetic field if the charged particle is moving in the presence of magnetic field it will experience a f vector is equal to q of v vector cross v vector magnitude of this force is f is equal to q v d sin theta so theta is the angle made by v vector v vector and uh, b vector so here the angle between v vector and b vector that is always mind that means charged particle always experiences the maximum force that is qvd so centripetal force is mv square divided by r that is equal to qvd sin 90 sin 91 so 1v 1v get cancelled here so r radius of circular orbit that is exactly equal to mv divided by qb right so this is the radius of the circular orbit r is equal to mv divided by qb so what about the time period so actually speed is the distance divided by a time taken speed is the distance divided by time taken so for one complete rotation of a charged particle so it covers the distance that means the length of path that is 2 pi r that is circumference divided by time taken to complete one rotation is time period so t is equal to 2 pi r divided by v so t is equal to 2 pi divided by v what is the value of r r is mv divided by q right r is mv divided by q so v v get cancelled so the time period of charged particle that is 2 pi m divided by qb so time period of charged particle does not depend so this point is very important does not depend does not depend on what the speed of the charged particle and the radius of the circular orbit so if a charged particle uh, 
the time taken by the charged particle to complete uh, one rotation in a very small circle and in a very large circle both are same why because the time period does not depend on the speed and the radius okay and even the frequency the frequency of the charged particle that is qb divided by 2 pi m actually this is called the cyclotron frequency so this frequency uh, should be equal to the applied frequency of uh, ac oscillator okay so cyclotron frequency should be equal to the frequency of rf oscillator so <clears throat> angular frequency that is omega is equal to 2 pi fc so 2 pi fc is qb divided by 2 pi m so 2 pi 2 pi get cancelled so angular frequency of charged particle here that is qb divided by m but actually we want the energy of high energy of charged particle right so if a uh, charged particle reaches if charged particle that is proton okay reaches reaches near near periphery near periphery of the b near periphery of the b so then the radius of the uh, circular orbit that is approximately equal to the radius of the D. So the speed is equal to radius into angular frequency. So V is equal to radius into omega is QB divided by M. So this is the maximum speed of charged particle in cyclotron. So but we want the energy. So kinetic energy is of m v square so the maximum kinetic energy acquired by the charged particle that is of m this is maximum velocity square so of m v is uh, qbr divided by m so v square <coughs> q square uh, b square r square divided by n square can m get cancelled so finally the maximum kinetic energy acquired by the charged particle in a cyclotron q square <coughs> b square r square divided by 2 m this is a very important mathematical expression this is the maximum kinetic energy acquired by the charged particle in a cyclotron. So this is about the theory, theory of cyclotron. Okay, now uh, we will uh, discuss about uh, the limitations and uses of the cyclotron. So actually there are two very important limitations of this so electrons uh, cannot be accelerated electrons cannot be accelerated in a cyclotron because electron is a very light particle its mass is very small it is of order 9.1 into 10 power minus 31 kg it is accelerated what happens means uh, the electron is uh, hits the periphery of the d it will not move in uh, semi-circular path because it is a very light particle okay so that is why 
electron cannot be accelerated in a cyclotron and even neutral particles cannot be accelerated in a cyclotron for example neutrons 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 are electrically neutral right so these particles cannot be accelerated electrically neutral particles cannot be accelerated in a cyclotron these are the two limitations limitations of cyclotron electrons cannot be accelerated in a cyclotron neutrons being electrically neutral cannot be accelerated in a cyclotron and what are the merits what are the uses what are the advantages of cyclotron that is also very important so cyclotron can accelerate positively charged particles like uh, proton deuteron also particle to very high energy right so this is the first use of cyclotron cyclotron accelerate positively charged particles like proton deuteron and also particle to very high energy okay so this is the use of uh, cyclotron and uh, it requires uh, comparatively low voltage for producing very high energy charged particles it requires comparatively very small voltage for producing very high energy charged particles and it occupies a comparatively small space it occupies comparatively small space hence it is compact and it is compact and it is used to investigate nuclear structure it is used to investigate investigate nuclear structure and it is used to produce artificial radioactive substances which can be used in medical diagnosis it is used to produce the artificial artificial uh, radioactive substances uh, which can be used in medical diagnosis so these are some uh, uses of cyclotron what are the limitations electrons cannot be accelerated in cyclotron neutrons being electrically neutral cannot be accelerated in a cyclotron uh, cyclotron can accelerate the positively charged particles like proton deuteron also particles to very high energies right uh, it requires comparatively a low voltage for producing high energy charged particles and it occupies a uh, small space uh, hence it is compact it is used to investigate nuclear structure it is used to produce artificial radioactive substances uh, which can be used in medical diagnosis okay so this is about the meaning principle construction working and limitation drawbacks of cyclotron so what is the principle finally principle is very very important okay a charged particle can be accelerated to very high energy by making it pass through a moderate electric field number of times right that can be done with the help of this perpendicular magnetic field so which throws the charged particle into circular path okay the frequency of the charged particle does not depend on the speed of the charged particle and the radius of the circular orbit that is the principle of cyclotron cyclotron is a particle accelerator it is a device used to accelerate the positively charged particles like proton deuteron also particles to very high energy it is a principle 
a charged particle can be accelerated to very high energies by making it pass through a moderate electric field number of times that can be done with the help of a perpendicular magnetic field which throws the charged particle into that's the path the frequency of the charged particle does not depend on the speed of the charged particle and the radius of the circular orbit okay so this is about the meaning principle construction working uh, limitations uh, that is also for drawbacks and merits uses advantages of cyclotron okay the next very important concept that is force acting on a current carrying conductor force acting on a current carrying conductor or uh, in the presence of magnetic field so here you know, let us consider a current carrying conductor that is placed in the presence of magnetic field consider a conductor of length l or uh, uniform cross sectional area a let us consider l to the length of the conductor uh, a is uniform cross sectional area so theta is the angle made by uh, l vector and b vector so n be the number density n is number density that means number of uh, mobile charge carriers number of mobile charge carriers per unit volume of the conductor and what is the total number of mobile charge carriers in the conductor so total uh, number of mobile charge carriers total number of mobile charge carriers in the conductor that is number density into the total volume the volume of the conductor is area into that right so n into al is total number of mobile charge carriers in the conductor so if q is the magnitude of charge on each mobile charge carrier then the total charge then the total charge is charge is quantized that is n a l into q right if uh, one mobile charge carrier that is q is moving in the presence of magnetic field it will experience a force f vector is equal to q of so here the velocity of mobile charge carrier is v vector that is the drift velocity of charge carrier it is the meaning of drift velocity the average velocity with which a free electron in a conductor um, that is get drifted in a direction opposite to the direction of the applied electric field so here mobile charge carrier means that is free electron right so actually your n a l q number of uh, charges moving uh, in the conductor uh, in the presence of uh, uniform magnetic field so the net force net force on the current uh, carrying net force on current carrying conductor net force on current carrying conductor that is f vector is equal to q n a l uh, into v d vector cross d vector okay 
So actually, the current density is current per unit area. So current mathematical expression in terms of drift velocity that is m q a v d. So divided by a, a a get cancelled. M q v d is j. M q v d is j vector. Okay. So f vector is equal to a l into j vector cross b vector because j vector is n q v d vector and even j a j a is i j vector j into a is i but vector sign is not transferred from j to i because the current is a scalar physical quantity right so that is why here the vector sign is transferred from j to l l is a vector that is a displacement the direction of j direction of l both are same so here the vector sign is transferred from j to l because the current is scalar right so now what happens l vector so vector sign here transferred from j to l l vector cross b vector so j a is i finally we will get f vector is equal to i of l vector cross b vector so the magnitude of this force magnitude of f vector is f that is c i m sin theta theta is the angle made by l vector and b vector okay so this is the force experienced by a current carrying conductor so in the presence of magnetic field so this is the magnitude of force f is equal to del sin theta uh so your number of special cases are there if for uh, l vector is parallel or anti parallel parallel or anti parallel to the direction of magnetic field theta is 0 degree or 180 degree the force experienced by current carrying conductor is zero so if if l vector is perpendicular to b vector l vector is perpendicular to b vector so that what is the value of theta theta is 90 degree the force acting on current carrying conductor is maximum that is e i l pi 90 pi 90 is 1 so this is the maximum force acting on the current carrying conductor so the direction of f vector is always perpendicular to the plane containing two rotational vectors l vector and b vector the direction of force that can be determined by using right hand corkscrew rule so the right handed corkscrew is turned so that uh, the tip of the screw moves towards the direction of force head of the screw turned gives the direction of rotational vectors that is l vector and b vector. Uh, suppose if l vector is perpendicular to b vector then the force acting on the current carrying conductor that can be determined by using the planning left hand rule so <clears throat> this is the planning the left hand rule stretch out the first three fingers of left hand in three mutually perpendicular direction a uh, four finger points in the direction of magnetic field so middle finger points in the direction of uh, current flowing through the conductor the thumb points in the direction of force so here uh, the force acts vertically up this diagram so this 
is the direction of magnetic field. So this is the direction of uh, current. The force acting is vertical upward. So the root is very important. Stretch out the first three fingers of left hand in three mutually perpendicular direction. Four finger point in the direction of magnetic field. The middle finger point in the direction of current. Thumb point in the direction of mechanical force. So here the force acting on current carrying conductor is vertically up. Suppose current going like this. It is from uh, right to left. So this is the direction of magnetic field. So now apply the Fleming left hand rule here. Stretch out the first three fingers of left hand in three mutually perpendicular direction. The four finger point in the direction of magnetic field. It is normally inverse, right? Middle finger point in the direction of current flowing in the Y, current flowing through the conductor, that is from right to left. The thumb point in the direction of mechanical force that is vertically downward. Okay, so what is the expression for force acting on current carrying conductor in the presence of uh, magnetic field? That is F is equal to del sine theta in vector form. F vector is equal to I of L vector cross B vector. If L vector is perpendicular to B vector. So then the direction of force acting on current carrying conductor that can be determined by using Fleming's left hand rule. So when the force acting on current carrying conductor is maximum, if L vector is perpendicular to B vector, then force acting on current carrying conductor is maximum. If L vector is parallel to B vector or anti-parallel to B vector, so it doesn't experience any mechanical force. Okay. Okay, thank you.